Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me for my first proper drive in the new BMW M8 Competition Grand Coupe First Edition 1 of 8. And yes, that is quite a lengthy name for the most exclusive BMW in the world. There are only eight of these in total, the pre-production models before the full production run starts. And BMW UK have very kindly lent me this one to take and drive for a couple of weeks before my M8 Competition comes later this year. Now today I can tell you a little bit more about that, but we're going to go through all of the details that make this car quite so special. Things like the colour scheme of the first edition, the headlights, the interior, the touches from BMW individual manufacturer. Now I've actually driven it so far about 600 miles or so since collecting it a couple of days ago, but that's given me an opportunity to learn some of the things I like and to build up some feedback about it, which I can tell you today about this. It is actually the most expensive BMW model as well that has ever existed, but let's check out today then the M8 1 of 8. The weather here in the UK is bizarre. It was sunny when I arrived a couple of minutes ago, just as it is sunny again now. But in the meantime, there was a torrential downpour of rain and it is also very, very windy. So I apologize for that. And I also apologize for quite how dirty the car is, but it has been used. So let's take a look around this and run through it. Now BMW are going to be making 400 units of the first edition of the M8 Competition Grand Coupe. The Grand Coupe, of course, being the extended wheelbase to fit the extra doors. The four door version, it's just over five meters long a very big car but still powered by the 4.4 liter twin power turbo v8 making 625 horsepower 750 newton meters along with having the mx drive system which means you can either drive it as a four-wheel drive car or you can pop it into rear wheel drive to have some fun which i imagine with this and the length of the wheelbase is probably an awful lot of fun those 400 cars plus the eight one of eights the pre-production cars because the full production run of the grand coupe will start in a couple of months time are all in this color this color scheme the Aurora Diamond Green, representing the colour of the Northern Lights. Eight countries around the world where you can actually see the Northern Lights, hence the eight cars, and all finished as well with these bronze gold accents around the lights of the grille the front fascia of the wheels, the side vent pieces, the mirror arms, the window surrounds, and also coming around towards the rear, the M8 badging designation with the 1 of 8 logo sitting underneath it at the back too. Now the 1 of 8s also have additional touches from BMW individual manufacturer, some logos and nice materials. I'll show you through those too, but this is going to be the color scheme of all 408 cars, I suppose we could say. Now I've got the display key here. If you've seen, if you've not seen this before, it gives you a lot of information on the screen. You can unlock it but most specifically have a look at those headlights you've got those yellow running light surrounds now these are actually homologated yellow lights just like for example on the m8 gte race car so you have the main bright white lights and if you're running in the day these actually go white instead of yellow of course i think legal requirements require them to be um, white primarily so that is the main thing you see but it is very distinct and when you catch a reflection of it it looks really really cool now the paint color itself is actually a bit of an iridescent color. You kind of get blues and greens and all sorts of dark shades out of it. I think the spec of this is stunning. That combination, the bright accents as well, just works so well. They really push the boat out to make design and I think ultimately to release a car that looks like this. Now to come and have a look at the inside, both the front and the rear, and I've been really impressed actually with the amount of space in the back. But to show you inside here against the green paintwork, we've got the brown leather, but finished to a very, very high standard. In fact, this car, I think, has just about every optional equipment item you could possibly have on the BMW. It is their flagship model, after all. And then you have all of the touches that come from individual manufacturers. So the embroidery, one of eight here on the headrests, the logo there on the central console. You've got the floor mats, the one of eight floor mats. On the B pillars here, the one of eight logo. Also down here as well on the side sills, individual manufacturer. But then you've got the digital dashboard, the fantastic touchscreen infotainment with gesture control, where you can kind of wave away a phone call or rotate your hand to turn up the music. You've got the M setup modes. You've got the hotkeys here on the steering wheel. It's got all the configurability to do with the driving, four wheel drive, two wheel drive. You can even change the sensitivity of the brake pedal. But to come and show you quickly, actually let's leave that open for a second, to show you quickly in the rear of the car. I actually spent about two hours in the back being, well, kind of chauffeur driven. And that front seat is currently in my position. So you can see how much leg room there is, but I was editing away, sitting here comfortably, plenty of headroom too. And in fact, the roof line, I think gives a little bit more space than we could say the predecessor, the M6 Grand Coupe did. So it's 
plenty comfortable in the back. There's a lot of boot space as well. Of course, the extended wheelbase makes that significantly more possible than the 2 plus 2 configuration uh, of the M8 Coupe. But I wanted to show you the engine bay. Let's pop that open, come round to have a quick look at the power plant that we have up here. 4.4 litre twin power turbo V8, 625 horsepower, 750 newton meters. In the regular M8 non competition versions, you have 600 horsepower, but here in the UK, I think it's all competitions. You've got an eight speed auto gearbox, which means plenty of power, plenty of performance. And I mean, who can, how can you possibly go wrong with a great big V8 up front? To close the bonnet, you need to give it quite a slam to make sure it goes down in place. You can see this is all open for cooling to come through. More of the bronze gold for the M8 logos here as well. Lots of openings with the aero work down at the front and the exclusive wheel design housing the carbon ceramic brake calipers inside, which are distinguished by the fact that they're gold as well. So let's come in here. Let's get this car started up, bring it into life. As you can tell, very windy out there. Start stop button. Let's go. Okay then. So we're going to go for a drive, enjoy some of the roads around here and yeah see what it's all about and typically almost bang on cue it seems to have started raining again although i'd rather be in the car when it's raining than out and of course in here we've got heated seats you've got electric seats you've got lumbar you've got everything it is a very very comfortable car and i think that's one of the big things actually if you drive this in a normal way it is really smooth it is really really gentle but you can also dial it up in a big way with all of your controls so into gear let's head on out one small thing about it, let's pop the wipers on auto, is that the front is actually quite low. We noticed this taking it in and out of my garage. So you do have to be a bit careful of some bumps and that kind of thing, but it just instantly feels like a very cool place. You're aware of how big the car, driving it in London, it is gigantic, five meters 10 or so, which for some perspective means it's about 25 centimeters longer than say my Ferrari GTC4 Lusso. That's big, that is very, very big and also very wide as well. But, get that V8 grumble, it feels instantly like a nice place to be. You know, and you can be here comfortably with four people, with luggage, go across Europe, blast through the German autobahns. Yes, this road isn't fair on the car at all. This is a narrow British countryside, bumpy kind of road, not the place really where a car like this is at home, but it is interesting to kind of shake it around a bit, get a feel for what it's like, he says, as we have a big truck. So this is where I'm conscious of the width of the car, just because of the size it is relative to the lanes on which we're driving. So these hotkeys are currently set up. So M1 is automatically set up actually for quite a sporty setup to begin with. You can obviously customize it and go into various other different settings, but this is where I think, you know, you can set these things completely to your heart's desires, exactly what you would like out of it, exactly how you'd like the car to be set up. That's a strange noise. The click of the indicators. That's the one thing I would actually say doesn't feel as premium as the majority of the rest of the car. That sounds just, oh, it's a bit random. You also have stop start. If the engine was warm, of course, efficiency. And it is pretty efficient. Like I say, we've gone through a decent amount of driving, quite a few miles, about 600 miles or so in total so far. And the amount of fuel it's gone through has not been anything like what I would have expected from a car of such power, although admittedly taking it quite easy. He says, putting the foot down a little bit more. It just pulls endlessly. It's an amazing amount of power. I bet it would dyno significantly more than it's officially rated, but in any gear, it just seems to pull away. It drops gears in the background without you really knowing about it in a way that's just really relaxing. And obviously for motorway driving, you have things like um, the lane control where it holds you in place, which just make it just a generally relaxing drive, which is, that's really what you want. Now, of course, it's not quite as dynamic as the coupe. You'd expect that. The coupe is for your more enthusiastic driving. The convertible is for your boulevard cruising uh, of the M8s in its different varieties. The Grand Coupe, I think, is for long distance, for road trips, for just going on a blast somewhere. And I can't really think of many cars that would do it better. There's just something about it. And I love the M5. And obviously then the M5 competition came, um, which I had a drive in. But this is just, it's just, I don't know. I mean, it's holding gears as well, because obviously being in a slightly sportier mode, <laughs> yeah, it's just 
really, really, really nice. So let me talk a little bit while we head towards some other roads about what I'm doing with the M8 competition. M8 competition coupe. I don't think up to this point I officially said that, but you could probably work out that it was going to be a coupe. We've gone unusual style I think for the channel with quite a special colour scheme. Now I don't like doing things that don't have a reason, you know, just like this car. The colour scheme of this car is linked to the Northern Lights, is linked to the eight countries, the eight cars, the colours of the Northern Lights themselves. What I wanted to do was find something that would connect back to earlier generations of BMW's 8 series. Of course 8 is a very significant number for BMW in terms of the models that have existed in the past. Um, if you look way back to the first generation, to the Z8, to the i8, it's always quite a significant product that wears the 8 uh, designation. So I wanted to find a colour scheme and what we've ended up finding and doing is picking a green, and I know this is slightly funny because I didn't know that this car was going to come out in green at the time, but a green missing colour from the garage but also a very classy colour for the car. In particular though, a colour called Oxford Green, which is quite similar to this, it has to be said, but was originally from the 8, so it makes sense to fit that colour to the car. The interior is going to be a mix of Silverstone, Silver, with black merino leather, silver and black, to go with the green, which I think should be quite a fitting colour scheme too. So that's basically what I'm going with, and obviously a lot of technology and optional extras. I'll tell you all about those uh, at a slightly later date, but those are the main details. So as much as I would love this, I think that's a little bit crazy and hard to get for me. The one of eight, I might put in a cheeky message to BMW about this car, but I think they're gonna be keeping it on their long-term heritage fleet. At least I get to drive it, which is just an amazing opportunity. And, you can tell just cruising along, you know, things like head-up display, things like if you can put the sunshade on the rear window if you want. The sound system's fantastic, as you would expect. Everything's so easy, and you know, if you want to do the radio, you just wave your finger around and do that, or do two fingers to mute it. It's, it's just like that. It's just super, super, super easy. If you then want to change your various driving settings, you go into the setup button, and then you have it all instantly available through the touchscreen or through the iDrive controller to adapt and adjust again as you feel. So here in the UK, for example, you might want to go, oh, he says I've got to press the wrong button, um, back into setup we go. You might want to go to, uh, for chassis, to comfort, to smoothen out the suspension just a touch. And then you notice that actually immediately. Yeah, that's much better for these roads. And you can set up the brake to be more comfortable or put in two-wheel drive the usual kind of things. Like I say though, it's a big car. That was the road I was meaning to take. Anyway, we'll go in a circle. It's a big car and you're very aware of it. The width, the length. Driving in London, it's really, really, really something you have to be aware of and equally parking because of the length as well. Now I compared it to some of, you know, to the Lasso for example and said it's 25 centimeters longer. It is still about 45 centimeters shorter than say a Rolls Royce Ghost. So it's not a huge, 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 huge car, but it's very long compared to other things that I'm used to driving in this segment. You know, this is much bigger than the G63, for example. Um, so you're constantly aware of that when you're driving it. Um, I think when you're out on a more flowing road or a motorway, that's not going to be something you ever notice, think about, or are concerned about in the slightest. But, you know, it's one thing about the car. It changes the usability of it. Let's say if you wanted it as a daily in London, it's something that would be on your radar. You'd always have to think a little bit more about where you're going to park it. And in this car, with this paint scheme, the kind of flip iridescent green blue color that would not be an easy match so you need to be very aware of looking after the paint as well if it was mine it would definitely make a trip to topaz and get ppf all over it because you need to be careful with this kind of stuff but this is one of only eight in the world and it represents a demonstration an example of what bmw individual manufacturer but bmw m what they can do um, to create something very, very exclusive. And I did also say earlier, it's also about the most expensive BMW. I think it is the most expensive BMW they've ever made. This car carries a cost price, a list price here in the UK of about 160,000 pounds. That's quite a lot of money um, when you think about it. But I like that they've branched out and said, yeah, let's make this, let's do it, let's put it into production. They've done it and I couldn't be happier driving it. It's, it's fantastic. I'd probably prefer more to use it at my place over in Germany. This car would be much more natural there than it is on these kind of roads. But 
It's just a delight to drive. It's a really nice place to be. We have a little bit more rain on the roads, but this car just has extraordinary amounts of power in any gear, effortless acceleration, seamless downshifts in the background. Now, if I press M2, it will go manual. Everything will go up into Sport Plus. This is where we can use the paddles, not necessarily the most sporty kind of shifters ever, more like buttons on the back of the steering wheel. Plenty of sound as well through the cabin and plenty of speed. Shift lights as well, bang straight up into the next gear. And the hard thing about it is that the car goes so quickly, almost so undramatically, that I bet it looks almost slow on video, which is a strange one to kind of comprehend and, and try and explain. I'm going to turn down the road just here where hopefully we'll get an opportunity to actually put the foot down and give this a, give this a proper run. Down to second gear, let's go down into first gear, get around here. In fact, I'm going to pop it into automatic. Just put my foot down, accelerate up to the speed limit. Yeah, it just pulls so hard. It pulls so quickly. And you feel the torque, it's pushing you into the back of the seat. And obviously you can adjust your brake feel as well. You can genuinely feel the difference when it's in comfort. It doesn't change the amount of braking performance. It changes effectively the feel of the pedal. So you have to press it less far in sport to get the same amount of braking performance. But even just now, foot down on the throttle, <laughs> Away it goes, not a hint of slip, despite the fact we're on very wet roads at the moment. And just away it goes. Oh, gotta watch out what's going on here around the corner. And then, again, back on the power. Yeah, it shoots like a rocket. The gearbox has three different settings, your drive logic, your everything. You can adjust so much of the configuration of this car in terms of how it drives and what it feels like. It's really, I, I've enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed the M5 a lot, and this car has instantly given that same kind of reassurance and just sturdiness about everything that you do with it. And the bumps. Yes, okay, in Sport Plus it's pretty firm. That's to be expected. And then away we go again. <laughs> yes really quick really 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 very quick then obviously you can either press m2 again and go straight back to ah oh, that's back into m2 press it once more and then we're now in efficient comfort 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 four-wheel drive and obviously i haven't even gone into four-wheel drive sport where the car knows to give a tiny amount of slips so you can throw it around and have a bit of fun on a racetrack for example uh, without the full two-wheel drive lack of grip at the front end yeah it's a good drive even if the weather is really not on side today in the slightest. I've pulled up here and as you can see, I have basically reversed right back into the trees behind us and look how much we're sticking out the front of the space just to give you an idea of quite how long it is. Now, of course, the car has park assist. It has reversing assist. Now, this is the really, really clever thing. If you've been driving forwards, let's say you've been driving 30 miles an hour around some obstacles and you go into reversing assist, you pop the car into reverse and it does the steering. It will guide the car back on the same route it drove, obviously using the sensors to make sure it's correct. It saw me moving my hand around and yeah that kind of thing is magnificent park assist obviously helps you uh, park in a parallel or perpendicular space and you've got lots of different cameras and screens and things and in fact this whole infotainment system it's really good you've got your tiles you can change what you're looking at look at that view for example look at how much information we've got there you can see the setup of the different driving modes your engine data and your tire data all on the main screen in addition to what you have on the dashboard directly right in front of you where here of course you have your traditional speedometer um, and your rev counter over towards the right side with a screen you can change too there's a lot of information a lot of data and i really really like how all of this works it's very very good um, another thing i like that digital screen for your climate control all of these are just nice things there are some plastic buttons it has to be said but lots of it is finished quite nicely this is your hotkey to get to your assist setup so if you want to configure your individual assist systems and yeah give way warning cycle you you get the point there's a lot in there you can set that up exactly how you'd want it you've got these hotkeys which are kind of cool as you hover over them you can see at the top of the screen it adjusts which is currently set that's the entertainment under the climate this is a storage bucket now in here you can take the key this is a wireless charging pad and the key actually charges wirelessly so you pop that in there you can see the blue lights gone on and that will um, start charging itself up next to the cup holders usb port and then all of your controls now these are where it gets quite interesting so the exhaust mode we've had it on the whole time but you can turn it off independently setup 
is where we were while driving. These are your kind of on the go driving controls. There's M mode in the setup. Consider the difference between these two. Like M mode is the stuff that you do um, in advance. Setup is the stuff that you can just change as you go. So in M mode, check this out. Here you've got road, sport and track. So we can pop this between the different settings. But when you go into track mode, something really clever happens. Press and hold this, watch what happens. And we go completely into track. I'm gonna activate it. What it does is it gives you this focused driver dashboard. It turns off everything else. That screen is off and gone. It is all about you. You can see the rev counter up here with the horizontal uh, lines. All about you and what's going on. So you get that great view of your driving setup on the right. And obviously you've got a different display here in the center as well. That is really, really nice. I like that a lot. I'm not necessarily sure how many track days you do in one of these, but to have that option is just generally pretty cool. And you've obviously got road. Um, and sport will turn off as you can see driver assistance system inactive displays will focus on sporty driving now irrelevantly of how you've done that you've got lots more controls obviously the red hotkeys the red start stop button down here as well you've got your adaptive cruise control so you press this button it then looks for the lanes keeps you in lane um, and that just means when you're doing a long distance drive you don't have to fully hold the steering wheel you just kind of relax your arm a bit yes you're still holding it still holding it with two hands but you're not kind of forced into it which means at the end of like a six hour drive your wrist is more relaxed than it is otherwise it sounds strange but it does genuinely make a difference um, and change things and you just got nice things everywhere you know the alcantara for the headliner lights display up here borderless rear view mirror as well you can just about see that um, all nice details nice touches inside the armrest with a few bits and pieces usb-c port 12 volt socket decent amount of storage everything's really very nice Really, really, really very nice. I'll just open up the door. We are in park currently. Hear a little bit of it. Of course, more muted than engines of old. That is the way things, the direction things are headed. I'm just gonna take the key with me um, and shut this off just for the moment. Steering wheel automatically moves up to make getting out a touch easier. And from the key, by the way, if you haven't seen these before, you have a few things. You can see the car is open. You can do various things, see how much fuel you've got. Before you drive, you can also um, just check things and you can move it forwards and backwards uh, from the key. But like I said, literally right to the very back of the parking space and hanging out significantly at the front. And that is just a small sign of quite how large the M8 Grand Coupe actually is, the M8 Competition Grand Coupe. And it is a very long name, but it's a very, very nice car. It's just a cool car. I think one that most people wouldn't know what this was, let alone that it's a 160,000 pound car, but that's one of the beauties of it. It, and especially uh, you know the specialness of this thing I really 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 enjoy that element of it let me come and just sit in the back quickly to show you precisely how much space as you can see that front seat exactly as I had it when driving and back here you've got a repeat of the infotainment controls and some USB ports as well but I have plenty of space I mean lots and lots and lots of room and also lots of headroom as well and what about that much above me which for a sporty coupe style car of this nature is actually pretty decent. You do have good visibility from the front. The C pillars don't obscure things too much. And then back here, just like we have in the front, I didn't show, but the M style seat belts. So we've got the armrests as well with cup holders that flip out from the front and a storage bin uh, as well. A quick trip, trip to Starbucks with the car um, that we had. Then um, I might pull it forward ever so slightly just so we can have a quick look at the amount of luggage space. Maybe I can open it while it's here. Let's just give it a go, see what happens. Um, from the key, the press of the button, up it pops. Might be catching some branches with this, but there's a decent amount of space back here. You can fit plenty of cases and big bits of luggage. Then of course up here, you've got the button to uh, close it or to lock it. Just like so. <laughs> I've literally gone right back into the trees. Hopefully I'm not going to, no, we're good. We're all good. Anyway, looking a bit filthy, that's for sure. Just from a short little drive out in the rain, but a car that is fantastic. I feel very, 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 very lucky to be driving this, especially with the green uh, paintwork and the yellow headlights and the gold touches. The whole details of this car are really, really nice. Have a look at that. Have a look at the blue lenses inside the BMW laser lights that you have. Very, very trick, very cool. 
and look at that front end. Low, wide, aggressive, the narrow, very wide grille, the headlights also being narrow, wrapping around the corners. It just has presence, and yes, you can hear the fans. They run almost in overdrive while the car is cooling itself down um, after a drive, but you can't beat that. It looks epic. This thing is so cool. So a big, big, big thanks to BMW UK for the opportunity to be driving this car. Um, let me go, know guys if there's anything specific you would like to see it while the car is still in my hands. For the time being, awesome despite this weather. At least it's not so windy here, but that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.